does not disrupt the, uh, the stability of the frame. So in such a case that if you are using it in uh, primary fixation, that time you have to be very cautious about the stability. Then the commerce indication would be uh, attention, please, audience, please attention. Then commonest indication would be as a conversion of the synthesis. And then in cases of hydraulic fractures, segmented, segmental fractures, why we don't have easy available alternative methods, and then cumulative fractures. Then this is quite a handy uh, fixation in case of elderly osteoporotic patients. One of the common examples, you see you have a proximal tibial fracture, though everybody would think that it could be near, but at a closer look, you have a fracture going right well into the proximal fibrosity. So the apprehensions in such cases are always that while putting in an intramedullary device, you might disrupt the fibrosity and this might give trouble. In, in institutions or in places where people are really well versed with the Elizabeth technique, so Elizabeth is a handy, uh, this alternative. So in case of tibial fixation, if you have a diaphyseal fragment, then it's better to have two proximal rings and two distal rings to give stability. In case you have fractures to the either end of the either end of the bone, then you can have two closer rings and the other ring can be distal. So that can give stability as well. Like you see in this case, this is to demonstrate that you have two closer rings and then you have a distal ring because the intact segment is there already. You have a big bone segment that is intact. So you don't need to add stability in that part. And however, if you want to be certain about the stability, you can use always drop pins, drop half pins or you could use on post, you could use wires as well. At the same time, then I wanted to demonstrate the use of all our wires. Now you see, you, you have a translation of the fraction. So you can use counteracting olives, one from this side and another from the other side. So then the fixator, the uh, fixation wouldn't wobble, it wouldn't move here and there, and it would give a sound fixation. So this patient went on to union nicely. This is another look, another example of a community fracture. You see, this is even more worse than the previous one. You have a lot of uh, community fragments in between, and the fracture line is well within the articular surface. It's an intra-articular fracture. People might try experts here and there, but then logic says that we could do, if we are able to do it without disruption of the soft tissue, without invasion, as Lizro is, the most minimally invasive uh, this instrument that could deal with these situations. So yeah, under such a situation, why I chose this, this can be done by big nuts very well, because you don't have to have any, you don't have any depressions, articular depression, the displacements, in many articular fragments, but at the same time, the ring fixation is very effective in these conditions. Again, the use of olivides is very significant, you could use uh, olive wires from the lateral aspect where you have the above the fibular head. This would give complete fragmentary compression. And then in order to have the fixation in the rest of the skeleton, you could use things as per the need. And you see the anatomy is restored. There is no issue why the structure should not heal. And at the same time that you are able to give ambulation, you have allowed the patient to be ambulated. Most important, most important in case of proximal tibial fractures, you have a lot of soft tissue damage. So any intervention inside which involves open direction internal fixation is fraught with complications. And most of the time you lose a range of motion in such a situation, but Elizro gives you the perfect answer in that regard. Conversion osteosynthesis, I think in this institution or anywhere, this would be the most ideal case for a ring fixation. You see, who is the usual patient? Somebody who has had an open fracture, has been dealt initially with an external fixator, then he has bone, that bone has settled down. Now, the decision remains, do I convert it? Do I convert it into a, this, this internal fixation, a plate or an intramedullary nail, or do I go with some kind of an external fixation like Elizabeth? So the decision becomes relatively easier in case of tibia because you see the rings are not that cumbersome in case of tibia. And then you have always the apprehension of 
this uh, pin tracks that might lead into infection. So you err on towards doing it with the little group. And especially for TB, it's quite an easy job, quite, a, quite an easy job for the juniors. Why I choose these things? Because these things can be done by the beginners very, very, very well. This is exemplified by this patient, like you see. This head was a patient who had an open injury type of injury. That is what the patient continued to have a stiff delayed union or kind of a stiff non-union. There will be lots and lots of patients who will be having delayed union or stiff non-union. A stiff non-union is one which doesn't have a frank mobility, where you, it appears that some kind of chances of union are still left. I think Elizro convulsion osteosynthesis is one of the best uh, methodology to deal with such conditions. So again, if you look at the stability that you have had distal rings, one in the distal, then you have the closer rings towards the fracture to give stability. And especially in case if you have distal fractures that you sometimes might need to add a calcaneal fixation as well to prevent motion towards the ankle and make the, uh, this uh, you know, fixation stable. So what I want to add here is what is important what we have been doing for so many, many years. Now that you know, this fracture is, this is now eight weeks old. So it might have lost its potential. Though you might have stability, you might have other things, but it might have lost the biology, uh, this uh, potential of healing. So what we do after you have minimally fixed these, percutaneously do a kind of an osteotomy. You see like there, we have created a fresh hematoma. And this is the one which leads to the neogenesis again. Then you can play with this. Then if we did distraction and compression, you know that you have the marrow elements now. So that those could be played with. That's how only after some weeks or maybe eight, 10 weeks, this patient is solidly fixed. And uh, remembering the general principles, if, if your fibula was intact, you got to cut that. And important factor in case of fibula, you don't need to do maximum blood big uh, gaps in the fibula, but instead, sometimes you can do an oblique osteotomy. Oblique osteotomy has a tendency that it can slide up and down. So you don't have the problem that it will just suddenly fit and it can get united earlier. This is to show one of the commonest examples where you could do as a beginner. Since my aim on today's lecture is that we would, we would stick to the basics. We we'll try to do those things which you would be able to do next day. Inshallah. And then, like this patient, again, you have distal fractures communicated where this could be debated that you would go with an expert nail. Then if expert nail itself has its own issues that you have, even doing the best, sometimes you are not able to treat the valgus as well. And especially if you have an adult elderly patient who's proactive, where you say the place will work, the nails might not hold well. His raw is handy. And then you immediately start ambulation, even if not, if you don't allow them full bit pain, but at least they are comfortable with the, these rings. Then this I wanted to suggest, like you many a times, you will see many proximal tibial fractures that are, are not displaced much. So just putting them on the traction table, it settles down, then holding them with a couple of Quiets are the hybrid position with a, this candidate script gives wonderful results. And to make the fixation less cumbersome, you can just attach the delta assembly distally. And you can use only a five by eight trick to work this uh, fixation because becomes very stable as well as very functional. I think such type of patients you should definitely treat by this raw technique. This is the one which you can deal with, with very easily. Maybe. I have not shown the patients who have had depression because that can be dealt out as well. But for the beginners, I think these are the ones that should be tried. Many a time people would suggest why not just fix it. Simple uh, plaster uh, immobilization in such cases. But if you go back retrospectively, look at those, those all patients who had been treated conservatively with long leg costs, they've always, always, almost always a virus still. Because if the fracture is not shown up initially, but it does show up while you started this uh, kind of evolution. So this is a great thing, what you could do. This is at the time of en ending of the treatment. The, this uh, secret has been uh, taken as well out. And uh, this, uh, the range of motion is excellent. We have had never an issue with the range of motion. So non-unions again, non-unions could be, one could be stiff non-union. Where you say there was sometimes it is doubtful. 
where you do, there is some potential of union. So you call it a stiff non-union. It has some kind of a fixable. It is not that frankly mobile. Then you have infected non-union, and then you would have defect non-union. Defect non-union could be aseptic as well as septic. That, uh, like I wanted to show this one, this guy. This was a uh, open fracture in femur that was dealt initially with external fixator. Appeared that it's healed well, but once the patient started amputating this, it showed some kind of a movement. And once we went, once we assessed it, there was kind of a hypertrophic element, but it was not fully united. So this was done in our unit. Among these, uh, uh, the, what, you, what you see, it, this is done by the unit. It's not all done by myself only. I wanted to show the reproducibility of these things. So this is very important to tell you. These are simpler things, which can be easily done by any person with a reasonable amount of training. So again, we did a fresh hematoma. Since the fracture was, I think, four or five months uh, delayed, so we did a fresh hematoma. We don't hesitate in giving an osteotomy cut percutaneously without disrupting. We don't open it. Just percutaneously like you do an corticotomy, we try to be an osteotomy through the fracture. So maybe some fibrous tissues are disrupted and the fresh hematoma comes into play. Then this compression and distraction mechanism or ambulation of lithro comes into play. So he went on healing very well. Now this video is just to tell you that uh, the if uh, a ring is well fixed, if a railing is well fixed, that it is not that cumbersome. Without a support, without cane, without tracks, the patient is ambulatory. This is if you have followed all the biotechniques and your ring is stable, then you can allow this type of business for the patients. So this patient again went on to heal very well. Now, one of the important aspects and the common aspects is dealing with defect unions. So you have a defect post osteomagnetic defect. Now, these no, defects could be defined. There are, this is a palace classification. There are a number of classifications. There are conditions where you have defect as well as overall short because it has compressed. Sometimes defects are there, but the fibular, fibular length is maintained. So what you tend to do in such a situation, you could do a bone transport with the tibia only, without disrupting the leg. On other cases, if you have simultaneous like discrepancy, you can deal with simultaneous. So this is a kind of peg and hole docking. What has been done here? You see the fracture ends have been fractioned. So again, the stability you have created a peg and the hole in the proximal manifices. And at the time of surgery, the uh, fractures appear live. And then this is holding the proximal fragments. Then the once you have completed the frame, you have also done fibular osteotomy because now in this situation, we have docked it acutely. So now the length has got to be compensated elsewhere. Otherwise, if you don't want to alter the length of the limb, if the limb is in, if the limb doesn't have any limb length discrepancy, then you could do, you could get this fragment up. That's called the internal bone transport. That's a transport. While as here, this is compression, distraction. This is another mode of dealing with non-unions. So this is how this patient went. You have a brilliant, uh, this uh, regenerate coming up from distally. And look at the cross-section of the region. This is the how the regenerate should look like. If your osteocortomy has been good enough, then you will see this lovely regenerate in a big cross uh, this transaction. There are no defects in between lateral, medial, or posterior. That means the corticotomy has been done with most preservation of the soft tissues. And so once you have completed the transport, you see you have done the transport fully. The, the signs of healing are already apparent on this side. And finally, you got the length applied and the patient is healed well. Only thing is that uh, there has this um, procurvatum has happened. This is perhaps because of the, you're in this till you have got a length and again, the tender Achilles has been tied. And maybe we did have some, I think we had support of the ankle across, across the joint, but despite that the muscular forces are tremendous. So this needs to be taken care of, this needs to be watched about. Thank you very much.